In the first part of this series, we covered how the U.S. Air Force teaches pilots how to do basic surface attack. But we left off with an important question. What do you do if you don't have a modern HUD that will show you the impact point of your bomb? In this video, we'll answer that question. So what do you do if you don't have a HUD that does all of this work for you? Well, as we all know, air forces around the world have been dropping bombs since long before HUDs were invented. So we're going to go over the information that they use to plan their missions that you can use to, to figure out all of your base references. We're going to have to do a little bit of math for this, but don't worry, it's nothing difficult. So if you look at the diagram on the right, you'll see that whenever we're in a 30 degree dive, our slant range to the target is always going to be exactly twice what our altitude is. Different angles, the ratio will be different, but this is one that's pretty easy to remember. Knowing the slant range is important for a number of reasons. Many bomb fuses need to travel a certain minimum distance before they arm. Another reason we'd want to know the slant range is that if we know how far our ordnance is going to travel, we can actually look up the correct point of aim in a chart. You can also use these numbers to help you with your planning. If a certain landmark near your target will give you 20,000 feet of slant range, you now know that you need to be 10,000 feet over that landmark before you do your roll in at a 30 degree dive angle. Before we jump into the jet and start turning knobs, we need to get familiar with the four terms that I have highlighted on the screen right now. The first line we need to know about is the fuselage reference line. This is pretty much where our, the nose of our aircraft is pointing. Uh, the next one we need to be familiar with is the flight path. And we should all know by now that the difference between the way that your aircraft is pointing and your flight path is known as the angle of, of attack. And so what we need to keep in mind is any kind of ordinance that we drop off of our aircraft is going to be affected by our flight path. Especially with bombs, they're not so much affected by the direction that we're pointing. So all of our calculations need to go off of the flight path. The zero sight line is where our gun sight is looking when we have it set to zero depression. On the F5, which we'll be using in our example, that puts it about two degrees beneath the fuselage reference line. So since any bomb that we drop is going to end up flying a trajectory underneath our flight path, any depression we dial into our gun sight is going to have to take angle of attack into account. In other words, that gun sight is going to end up pointing somewhere beneath our flight path. Back before aircraft carried computers that could do all of the calculations for you, the calculations were all actually stored in dive bombing tables that you could find in an aircraft's flight manual. The way you'd use this chart is first you'd find your planned dive angle, then your release altitude, and finally your release speed. Then you come over to this column and you find your sight depression from your flight path. Then all you have to do is dial it into your gun sight and you're done. Our gun sight uses the mill as its unit of measure and mill is just simply short for milliradians. There are 17.45 mils in one degree and 6,283 mils in a circle. But you don't need to remember all of that. All you need to remember is that one mil is one foot at a range of 1,000 feet. Armed with that knowledge, you can actually figure out how far away something is simply by measuring how many mils it takes up in your sight picture. This graduated line is an example of that. If an average size man fits in underneath the two, it means that he's 200 meters away. If he fits in underneath the four, it means he's 400 meters away, and so on down the line. So let's take a look at one of our earlier examples where we had a 10,000 foot slant range on our target. In this example, if you went and adjusted your gun sight by one mil, you would actually move your point of aim by about 10 feet. You can also use mil calculations to help you in your planning. So let's say you find this great landmark that you can use as your aim off point, and it's a little over 500 feet from your target. That would put it at 50 mils, which translates to roughly 3 degrees. You now know your initial aim off angle, and you can use that in your plan. So let's bring all that together and see how it looks from within the cockpit. So here we are on our planned dive angle with the correct gun sight depression dialed in and our target in view. Since we don't have a flight path marker on this aircraft, 
it's especially important that we make sure that we're on all of our delivery parameters. Everything has to line up according to our plan because we really have no way of compensating if we're off. If you did everything correctly, then the reticle would drift up onto the target just in time for a smooth weapon release. All of this might seem like a lot to remember, but it actually gets really easy with practice. Putting in the time to master basic surface attack is worth it. You'll go from looking like this to looking like this. In the next part of this series, we'll go over how you can practice this on your own. We're going to cover the different surface attack patterns and how you can use them to master BSA. Thanks for watching.